Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Today I thought we would talk about another option for binding for the beginner book binding project that we did a few weeks ago. I know there are a lot of folks that have some trepidation, some anxiety about sewing a binding and sewing your signatures together. So I thought I would show you a fairly simple way to get around that and do a no sew binding and it'll end up looking very very similar but maybe a little bit easier at least if you're just starting out with book binding or maybe you just don't want to sew your signatures together. There are non-sewn bindings and I will show you one of my favorites and maybe it'll be something that'll be helpful to you if you don't want to sew your signatures or maybe you have a day where you don't have time to be sewing pages together. This is a little faster, not a ton, but a little faster and maybe you will like it better or be able to use this technique in some of your bookbinding projects. A lot of people have heard about what's called a perfect binding and a perfect binding is like what you'd see in a magazine where single sheets of papers are all stacked up together and one side is glued, the spine side is glued. And so this is an adaptation of that kind of a binding. In one of the books that I have, he talks about non-sewn bindings. And I use a version of what he's doing here. So you might be able to see in this picture here how all the pages are all lined up and then he has sliced grooves through the spine end. So he has taken a saw or an X-Acto knife, but usually it's a little saw, and has made little slices just into the paper. So I do that. And then in this picture, you might be able to tell that he is lying pieces of thread through those grooves. So I will show you how I do that. I don't do it exactly like he does it. And he's also rebinding a book that was damaged. So it's a little, it's a little different. So let me show you what I like to do. And I use some of the methods that Henry Gross does in this book. I will walk you through the process of what I do. And it gets a fairly sturdy binding. I haven't had one fall apart yet, so. All right, let's get into it. Like the first book, we will be making pages the same way. So the width will be twice as wide as we want it to be because we're gonna be folding them in half just like we did for the first book. Instead of folding them together, several pieces of paper to a signature, we will be folding them individually. So there's no sewing, but there's a lot more folding. But hopefully that won't be too bad, depending on how big you want your book. But it could take a minute. So put some music on and uh, start folding your paper. Once all your papers are folded, I like to neatly stack them all up together. And then I take half of them and turn them around the opposite direction so that it's a little bit more even as far as thickness is concerned because the folded edge is wider. It's heavier and bulkier. And then I take a couple of boards just some book board, some hardboard, chipboard, whatever in this case. And I take a couple of clamps and I clamp those together and I leave that for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. And it helps to reinforce those folds and make sure that those creases are nice and tight. After we've given that a moment, just enough to flatten the pages a little bit so that they're nicely creased. I'm going to take two boards and I'm going to wrap each of them in a piece of plastic wrap. These are old book covers is all they are.
plastic wrap is one, one of those things that's like, oh my goodness, it's the bane of everybody's existence. It's up there with printers and gravity. I trimmed down these pieces that I had to be the same dimensions as the papers and I'm facing all the folds in the same direction. And I found that it's easier to get all of the pages evenly lined up if the boards that sandwich them are the same size. You just want to jog them all so that they are all lined up. It's important that they are flush and lined up evenly. And put a clamp on this side and then I will put a clamp on this side. And I don't want the clamp all the way up at the top and squeezing this super tight. I think I'll put the clamps down here on this side. So I still want there to be a little bit of elbow room in here. Zoom this in a little bit. Now they are lined up fairly decently. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to grab some glue. And this is just white PVA, white glue, and a brush. And I'm going to brush on the glue. And I'm not using a super soft brush. It has a little bit of stiffness to the bristles because I want the glue to work in between those folds just a little bit. And this is why I covered the two sideboards in the plastic wrap. Now, if you happen to have plastic boards, <laughs> then don't worry about it. It's just if you use boards that are chipboard, cardboard, you need something fairly stiff that's not going to be flexing and letting your pages move all over the place. When you go to take them off, they will stick to the paper. You don't want them to stick to the paper because then they could rip the pages. Just make sure you get a nice coating of glue. You want to saturate the folds. You don't want it super thick. You just want to make sure that there is an even coat on the entire spine side. Now we're going to let this sit for a little bit and it will dry fairly quickly, but we don't want it to dry all the way. So I'm just going to give it maybe five minutes tops and I will be right back. Still, you can still cool to the touch. You know how when you shuffle a deck of cards, you kind of bend them before you flip them with your thumb? And that's what I'm doing. I'm just bending these a little bit back and forth. Now this part um, is not absolutely totally necessary. It is an option for adding some stability to the binding. So if you would like to take a pencil and mark, and it doesn't even have to be exactly even, but it can be. I'm going to mark about four places along the spine. And then I'm going to take this little saw, and you could use an X-Acto knife or craft knife. And I'm going to nick the edge of those folds. The cuts are not deep. They're just barely through that layer of glue and sliced the back edge of the folds just to bite into that paper a little bit. And this is just some embroidery floss because that's what I had handy. I'm going to peel these apart because I just need four pieces. I'm going to put the clamps back on here just to hold this up. Now what I'm going to do is take my brush and my glue again and I'm going to dab some glue into each of those crevices 
and then I'm going to work a piece of string down in there make sure that it is down in that little groove. And a lot of times when, when people do a glued binding like this, it's single sheets of paper, it's not folded pieces of paper, which is totally fine. I find, however, that this kind of folded binding, whatever it's called, lends to more stability for a longer period of time, unless you want to make a notebook where you can rip the pages out, then you wouldn't want to do this. <laughs> PVA and paper, they become bonded very quickly and they can stay bonded for quite a while. So by cutting these little grooves and fitting in a piece of thread, it's almost like adding sewing. It's not as strong, of course, because it, it's not. It's just not. <laughs> but it's like the string becomes one with the paper. This kind of binding, however, is going to make a tighter binding, just like it would be for sewn pages that are put in a book press and squished down. So for junk journaling purposes and that kind of thing, maybe not quite such a great idea because it's not going to have the room between the pages to be adding a bunch of stuff. If you add a lot of bulk between pages that are merely glued together, like in a perfect binding, like if you bought a notebook at a store, that glue is going to be compromised by all that extra bulk in the middle that you're adding to the pages and it will weaken the binding and it will pull it apart in time. So now that that first little PVA that I painted on there is probably dry or close to it, I'm just going to paint one more layer over the top. I'm trying to be careful not to let it drip down the sides. It's also important to try and keep your binding so that your spine has the same width that at the bottom as it does at the top. That it doesn't fan out and your spine is wider or narrower at one end or the other. Or that it bulges in the middle or something. We don't want to do that. We're going to try to keep everything even. That's why we used the boards and the clamps when we were gluing so that we could ensure when we glued it together that it was the same width all the way down. And just like the other book, I have a piece of fabric that I'm going to trim because it's too long. And I'm going to lay that down on the fresh glue. And then this also serves to seal those threads in that we've glued into the paper. Grab the bone folder and make sure that that fabric is glued down. So if sewing makes you nervous, maybe folding paper is less stressful. And you could try this first. And then to finish it off, a light coating of glue over the fabric. And this will finish off the no sew technique. Make sure that that glue saturates through the fabric that it looks like it meets the other layer underneath. I go ahead and I leave these strings, I leave them long, and then when I am putting the pages into a cover just like the other video, these get glued down with the fabric to the inside covers of the book cover. And I made the pages a different size because you can make any size pages that you want. It is a little bit more labor intensive because you have to you have to fold all the pages first. I like this way better than just the single leafed perfect binding. I think this one lasts longer. And then as soon as this is dry, you go on just like in the other video and insert it into the book cover. So I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for hanging out with me today for this quick 
no sew binding technique to add to the beginner art journal video. And those of you that have a little bit of anxiety about sewing signatures, perhaps this will be more your cup of tea and you'll want to try this kind of binding. I hope everybody is having a great day and I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.